Amendment 35 to the Reef Fish Fisheries Management Plan considers making some changes to the Greater Amberjack Rebuilding Plan by modifying the stock annual catch limit and by making some changes to commercial and recreational management measures. The latest Greater Amberjack Stock Assessment shows that the stock is both overfished and experiencing overfishing. When a stock is overfished, it means that the population level is too low, and when a stock is experiencing overfishing, that means that the rate of removals is too high. So as a result of that stock assessment, the Gulf Council's scientific advisors have recommended that the Greater Amberjack Acceptable Biological Catch Level be set at 1,780,000 pounds. Right now, the annual catch limit is set at 1,871,000 pounds. And as a rule, the stock annual catch limit cannot exceed the stock acceptable biological catch. So adjustments need to be made to that annual catch limit in order to make sure that we are in line with our management goals. So Greater Amberjack Amendment 35 has three actions. The first action considers making modifications to that Greater Amberjack Rebuilding Plan. And it also considers making some changes to recreational management measures and commercial management measures. So action one, modifications to the Greater Amberjack Rebuilding Plan. As I explained before, the current annual catch limit is higher than the acceptable biological catch, and so some changes need to be made. The first alternative in action one is the no action alterna alternative. That would keep the annual catch limit at its current 1,871,000 pounds. And based on the 27% commercial and 73% recreational allocation, that would leave the commercial sector with 503,000 pounds and the recreational sector with 1,368,000 pounds of amberjack. Alternative two would set the annual catch limit at 1,780,000 pounds which would be equal to that acceptable biological catch recommendation. That would give the commercial sector 481,000 pounds of amberjack allocation and the recreational sector 1,299,000 pounds of amberjack. The third alternative in this action is the preferred alternative. It's it would set the annual catch limit at 1,780,000 pounds, and it would also establish an annual catch target of 1,539,000 pounds. Based on that 27% commercial and 73% recreational allocation, then, the annual catch targets would be set for the commercial sector at 409,000 pounds, and the recreational sector allocation would be set at 1,130,000 pounds. So just uh, to give you a little bit review here, the, annual, the difference between the annual catch limit and the annual catch target, at the annual catch limit, which can be set and will be in this alternative e equal to the acceptable biological catch, if that annual catch limit is exceeded, then accountability measures are triggered. Now, the annual catch target is set below that annual catch limit, and it acts as a buffer between catch levels um, and the triggering of accountability measures. So management targets would be set to that annual catch target level. And alternative four in action one would set the annual catch limit at zero until a new stock assessment is completed. So action two considers making some changes to recreational management measures. The recreational sector has exceeded its quota twice in three years since sector annual catch limits were implemented. Now, federal law requires the council to reevaluate and modify the annual catch limit system if catch exceeds the annual catch limit more than once in four years, and that's happened for us. So we have to make some considerations of changes to recreational management measures. So. Action 2.1 considers making some recreational minimum size limit adjustments. Studies have shown that 50% of female greater amberjack are reproductively mature at about 35 inches fork length. So with the current 30 inch minimum size limit, it's estimated that fewer than 5% of female greater amberjack have reached sexual maturity. 
Action 2.1 looks at increasing the recreational minimum size limit to increase the spawning potential of the stock. So there are four alternatives in this action. The first one, which is the council's preferred, is a no action and would retain the 30-inch minimum size limit. Alternative two would increase this minimum size to 32 inches fork length. Alternative three considers a 34-inch fork length. And alternative four considers using a 36-inch minimum size limit for greater amberjack. Action 2.2 considers making some modifications to the recreational close season for greater amberjack. So just a couple of facts about the, the current or the season so far for amberjack. Um, amberjack's managed as a quota, which means when the annual catch target is reached, then the regional administrator of NOAA fisheries can close the season for the remainder of the year. Currently, there's a June-July closed season in place, and that was designed to extend that amberjack season further into the fall. Um, and also, peak spawning for amberjack in the Gulf occurs in March and April. So there are five alternatives in Action 2.2. Uh, alternative one is the preferred. That would be a no action and would retain the June through July 31st closure. Alternative two would not establish the fixed close season, and what that would do is when the, the amberjack quota was reached, the regional administrator would then shut the season for the remainder of the year. Alternative three is a March 1st through May 31st closure. Alternative four would have a January 1st through May 31st closure and a November 1st through the December 31st closure. Now that appears as though it's two closed seasons, but put together it actually is a November 1 through May 31 closure, one continuous season closure. And then the last alternative, alternative five, would establish a June 1 through July 23rd closure. Uh, so Action 3 considers making some changes to the commercial management measures. Much like the recreational sector, the commercial sector has exceeded its quota, quota twice in three years since annual catch limits were implemented. Now, those same, some, we have to reevaluate those commercial management measures for the same reason as for the recreational because um, we are required to, make, to revise our management measures if that annual catch limit is exceeded more than once in four years, and that's happened for the commercial sector as well. So alternative one is a no action alternative, and that would not adjust the commercial fixed close season of May, March 1st through May 31st, and it would not establish a commercial trip limit at all. Alternative two, which is the council's current preferred alternative, would establish a commercial trip limit and maintain a March 1 through May 31 closure. Now the preferred option is option A, which would establish a 2,000 pound trip limit for the commercial fishery. Alternative three, in action three, would establish a commercial trip limit and it would eliminate the March 1st through May 31st closure. Uh, there is no current preferred option. Okay, so here's your chance to let the council know what your pre preferred alternatives are to reduce the current total allowable catch. Please keep in mind that the council must take action to comply with federal law. So the annual catch limit cannot be higher than the acceptable biological catch and commercial and recreational management measures must be reevaluated in this amendment. We want to know which of the options that achieve these goals are options that you prefer. So please send us your comments. You can submit written comments on Refish Amendment 35 by using our online comment form, or you can write us snail mail, and the address is shown on the screen. If you have any questions at all about this amendment, please don't hesitate to email golfcouncil at golfcouncil.org with your questions. Please keep in mind that comments must be submitted by January 23rd of 2012 in order for them to be included in the documents for the Council.